What's going on, Paisanos? V here, coming at you with a little marker watch today. We're still waiting for the next Lost Arts promotional card to come out. Hopefully, it comes out, I don't know, in about a day, and everyone has access to this card. As an OTS donor, I could tell you, I have not gotten my little box yet with those promos, so I don't know when we're going to be able to get it for locals. But maybe Konami will start doing things besides just alternate or lost art, maybe lost text. Cards like this, like After the Struggle. If you guys know the name of this card, please comment it down below. Let everybody else know that this card actually had another original name that Konami wound up having changed. Or maybe this was the original name it had changed. Once again, comment down below and let everybody else know. Moving forward, Pain Painter from Generation 4. Secret Rare, only printing, has a $9 market price. Looking at first edition, it's about 25. Actually, I'm sorry. Light you played is at almost near 15, and then first edition goes to about $25 for Pain Painter. Um, next, guys, we have Elemental Heroes. Now, I can easily show you Air Neos. Market price is $117. I mean, unlimited versions can start at roughly around $100 for Ultimate Rare Air Neos, by the way. When we get the first edition versions of this card, we're going to see it. Where is it? We'll see it right over here for about $225 for first edition Ultimate Rare uh, Elemental Hero Air Neos. But that's not really what I wanted to really focus on. Elemental Hero Air Neos Ultra Rare from Strike on Neos also is going up in value. Look at the original price point of this card. It's $60. It's $60, TCG player. Come on. Uh, look at the original price point. It's $60. Let's see if it loads. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> Unlimited versions are roughly around $59. First edition versions are about sixty dollars for an ultra version of um elemental hero air neos so the question has to be asked if there's an ultimate rare version of an elemental hero card and that version starts spiking high in value will the original prints go up and follow right afterwards it's really interesting to think about that because it always brings me back to like star dragon and how we look at the scorch rare version first edition it's insanely high in value the unlimited version pretty high in value and then we go right over to the ultimate versions of a star dragon and the ultimate first edition version high in value unlimited pretty high in value so i really do feel like we might even see besides the ultra versions of these hero cards despite crazy high in value we actually might start seeing the ultra counterparts go high in value as well uh up next vision hero adoration a card which has a market price of seven dollars but it's realistically 25 dollars in fact if you want a first edition version it's 50 dollars double the price point for Vision Hero Adoration, it came out in Generation Force originally, then it came out in Battle of Legends Legends Revenge, and that version is about two dollars. So there's that as well. Moving forward, Elemental Hero Neos Knight. No, we're not done with the heroes. It's, when they'll be done with heroes, they will always be bought out or always spike high in value. Looking at Elemental Hero Neos Knight is a ten dollar market price. Unlimited versions are about seventeen dollars. First edition versions, twenty two dollars from a ten dollar market price. Alright, now we're finally done with heroes. Look at other cards like Gilgarth from Gladiator's Sword. Market price has this card roughly around $20. But this card has a little bit of weird... Okay, so the first listing of it is around $200. And then after that, it's about $900. Almost $1,000. Because it's not $950. Uh, for Gilgarth. And it's really weird to look at it in Gladiator's Sword. Something about the set just has like... It has random cards like Gilgarth and another card I'll show you in a second. That has a lot of value, but absolutely zero play. And I don't think even the collectors really care about that. Last time I talked about a really expensive card from Glad You Saw it was in Magic Formula. Card has a $300 uh, market price. And then we look for Let You Play First Edition version. It's about a cool $1,400. $1,400 for Magic Formula. Is Gilgraf doing the same thing? It's two hundred dollars a discount price, and then it hits around a thousand for that card. In which, let's be honest with you, almost nobody's gonna really want. Maybe certain collectors will care about it, but not many people in general. Oh, by the way, if you have E-Telly, Emergency Teleport, Ultimate Rare, you got some money. You might not realize you have. <clears throat> Market price of E-Telly is seventeen dollars. Unlimited versions are about twenty-four. But as you can see over here, the first edition versions, lightly played, Emergency Teleport is around $53. $53 for first edition like you played e telly it's, it's, it's crazy how much this card moved on price point. La I, about a year ago, I think it was last, maybe a little over a year ago, when this, when this card was talked about, it was roughly around $8. And I was like, guys, this is a great idea to pick this card up. I think it was like 8 to 12. I was like, it's a great idea to pick this card up. It's a great card. I mean, it's a great ultimate rare. And hopefully Cosmos come off the ban list back then because we didn't know. And um, e telly goes to three. That could see play, right? Up next, 
E, Emergency Core. So you can from Rod Yellow Makeup Pack. Um, so, uh, it's about 14000 the market price. Unlimited are already almost near 16 First Fishers are also almost near $16 for E, Emergency Core. And it's really weird to see this card price point. And I said I wasn't talking about heroes, but E, Emergency Core is not a hero card. Anyway, uh, other versions of E, Emergency Core, like the common version, is about $5. The, uh, all the comments are almost near about $5 for e emergency core all over the place. So if you have a quarter box, you might want to grab your e emergency cores, the Rotor Street Heroes. They're $5 commons. Um, next, we have Sangon, the secret rare version. When the market price of $9, Light You Played Unlimited, it's about 15 first editions. Almost near $16 for Sangon. Now, I, I, I'm a big fan of this car. I like this car a lot. I just don't know. If it would see any kind of meta play, I know you'll say, "Well, you know, we got Ultra Guys, and we can run this card on Ultra Guys." And sure, we definitely can, but then you're just saying Ultra Guys lose turn one to an Ash Blossom, and I don't think that's the best way to play Ultra Guys. But then again, I could be wrong. We have to see. I personally have to test it out. And if you guys have tested it out, once again, comment down below. Let me know what you can think about this. Is this card only going to be used on Ultra Guys for that kind of setup with Salamigrate, Amaraz, searching out the Multi Faker? Or is this using other decks? And I would love to know what decks they are. So once again, please make sure to comment them down below. Also, since you're already down there, hit the like button, subscribe, and you want to support the channel TCG player, you can do that in the description below as well. Um, next, gold rare card. Ghost rare, gold rare cards. I a lot of people ask about um ghost ghost gold rares, but really uh ghost rare cards. And they go, V, there's too much, there's a lot of them, there's, there's a lot of them, I really want them, but they're a lot of money. And I agree. Ghost Gold is a lot, is, you know, these cards can become a lot of money. But for the most part, Ghost Gold is cheap, Ghost is not. Ghost Rare cards can go insanely high in value, like Star's Dragon, Black Rose Dragon. But these cards have not been touched, they're not really being looked at right now. And even though I'm not a big fan of Gold Rare, Ghost Gold Rare, I actually like a lot. It's complete opposite. Look at a card like Nature Barkeon. Market price is five dollars. We're seeing around four dollars for a ghost rare. Let me emphasize, ghost. It's gold, but it's ghost rare. Look at other cards like Gorgeous Emissary of Darkness is five dollars. Herald Perfection is six dollars. This card has seen metal play previously, and I think it can easily see metal play moving forward in the future. Other cards like Nasheria Beast, who cares? It's 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 not the answer. And then we go right into Memus Tees, um, which is under its market price of almost fifteen dollars. Ghost Gold version of the cards around ten dollars. Solemn Judgment still high in value. What well, came off the bands, of course, but it's less than its market price. Market price is twenty nine dollars. Solemn Judgment is looking to be around roughly around nineteen dollars. And then of course we have Blur Side Dragon Ghost Gold Rare, which is around thirty dollars. Now this is the most expensive version of Blur Side Dragon, but it's still a, it's the only version of the card that's in Ghost Rarity. So I do think. Gold series haunted mine. The ghost gold rares are actually really good. And if you want a card that's really cheap, that's really good for collectors, that's a ghost rare, you're gonna want to start here before you start looking at those starters dragons. Um, next skill drain. Like I said earlier in the video, I think that um hopefully Konai will be sending out um the Lost Arts version of Skill Drain. But before that version hits our stores that hit the pocket of you players, um, you might want to get rid of your ultra rare version of skill drain from Turtle Pack Booster 8. I know you're gonna say, well, it's, it's 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 still good money, V. It's still good money, and I agree, this is still great money for this card. This card will maintain a pretty decent price point, but it's declining in value. With a $32 market price, the card's currently listed around $28. And it's going to drop even further the minute these, the, the, the alternate art versions, which look exactly the same, except he has horns, lands in the hands of players. This will go down in value. And it is good value, but it's not sustainable value that's going to maintain a $28 price point. It's just not going to happen. Um, next, guys, Magical Merchant. Champion Pack 5, thanks to all the scapegoat players for the super rare version of Magical Merchant, um, the $68 price point is now around $200 for super rare Magical Merchants. Well, if you still want one, no big deal. You can get a star, a star pack, star foil, Magical Merchant, and that's what the market is basically doing. Looking to start for a rare version from Star Pack 2014, it has an under $3 price point, but we're seeing it almost bought out around $8 for this card. So if you want Magical Merchant for your go for my deck, you're gonna want to look in the store for a version, unless you want to pay two hundred dollars for it. It's your choice. When we fold reasoning, while you're looking in Star Pack 2014, I know it's reasoning with a two dollars sixty cent market price. It's just about bought out. There's only one listed and moderately played, and moderately played around three dollars. Once again, that's a moderately played. Other than that, anyone's price point for Star Four reasoning is that price point. It's gonna be a little bit hard for people to find Star Four reasoning, and maybe yes, in other markets like. 
trolling toad and ebay you might be able to find a couple sure i would recommend you grab them up and the reason why is because it came out in star pack 2014 and in about a couple of months we're gonna be entering 2020 doing the math that's a god that's a lot of time and the amount of Yu-Gi-Oh plays holding star four versions of reasonings aren't that many Though I will say, I think Reason's a great card for Konami 2 reprint. It has not been reprinted. So this is the highest rarity version of Reasoning. Also, let's just take a little look at GOATS. The, the OTS Toronto Pack 8 Ultimate Rare version of GOATS with a $28 market price. Um, you got one light you played for about $34. Then it hits about $36. Basically, it's still a lot of money. I just want to double check. I personally was just curious um, why doing this video. Up um, next, Cash Dragon Levy in the Year. $34 market price. We're seeing the event versions hit about that price point, about $34. Almost $35. For Cash Dragon Levy in the year. Now, as much as I love this card, and I think this card is broken, by the way, I, 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 anyone who says this card's balanced is lying to you or lying to themselves or both. <laughs> this card is insanely broken. But I do think this card's going to go down in value. And here's, here's two main reasons. Reason number one, it's in Soul Fusion, which is a good reprint target for the Goat series coming I mean, the Megatid coming out this year. Please, no more Goat series. The Megatid coming out this year. So I do think Cash Dragon Levy in the year is going to go down in value. That's number one. Number two, when we're looking at OCG and we look at Dragon Spit, they run one of these cards. So I do think Cash Dragon Levy is a great card. I still think that um, it's currently worth its price point, but I do I think that this card is going to go down in value because it's going to get reprinted. You can play my C, not oh, three in main decks anymore. One to make even two maximum versions of Cash Dragon Levy in the year moving forward in the future. Also, if the Royal Challenge's card has calmed down its price point, market price is around twelve fifty, and it's a little bit under twelve fifty in the market price. The hyper ip is just calming down. That's all it is. You can place one to run in and grab theirs. They're ready for the new meta, for the new rock structure coming out. But they, we didn't need it. Like everyone jumped in at one time. And they just filled the bus up. And now anyone who right now wants to buy an Ib, the World Chester Justice car, can just walk in and pay $12 as opposed to higher price points earlier. Oh yeah, Flame Veil Guard. You might want to get one of these. So look at that Flame Veil Guard from other versions like Kindle Arsenal Super Rares. They're, they're dirt cheap. Look at other versions for the common versions. They're, they're all over, it's like dirt cheap. But if you want a dual terminal one Flame Veil Guard, which had a market price of $2, it's currently $19 in the market. In case you want a DT version. I'm next, World Child's Guard Dragon. Now, here's something that's kind of interesting. I, this is a one-off, and I believe the World Child's Guard Dragon is a one-off. This did come in dual terminal, but this only had two printings, World Child's Guard Dragons. With the 2018 Mega 10 version being roughly around $2, and if you want the original Cold of Duelist version, which has a, around $2 market price, uh, you're going to be seeing it roughly around $2, so $3 for World Child's Guard Dragon. I'm not sure if this price was going to be sustainable, but I do recommend you go in and pick up one of these. They're 2 to $3, they're dirt cheap, and if you're looking to play Dragon Spit, you're going to probably want to get this card. Then we have Rising Rampage. What can I say about Rising Rampage that hasn't already been said already? I know I keep going over this set so much, but it's a really interesting set. We don't, we've never had a set like this in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Ever. And that's pretty, you know, odd. No, normally, we get sets on a pretty standard basis. They have pretty up and down cards, and then we move on. But what makes Rising Rampage so unique is this was a C minus set that became a B plus set instantly with the release of Prismatic Secret Rares. I'm a big fan of Prismatic Secret Rares. Been wanting them to have them for a long time, and I'm glad we all had the opportunity to get them. Sort of. You see, I do like Prismatic Secret Rares, and I do think the price points are going to be going down, as you can see over here listed all over. With Appaloosa, even though it's higher than its market price, it's lower than its overall price point of $500. It's now seeing a price point of around $350, so it's going low in value. And as the weekends go, these price points will go down in value. Don't get it twisted. These are going to drop down in value. They're not going to tank, by the way. For anyone out there holding three Appaloosa Prismatics, these will not tank, but they will go down in value, being the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh! players are going to be cracking over the Rising Rampage to play the lottery, basically. Then you got Wind the, uh, the, win the Wind Charm Inverted, uh, $168 market price. We're seeing this roughly around $145. It's not seeing any kind of play, so I do think this will go down. Unlike Appaloosa, which will still maintain a pretty good price point, Wind's going down in value. Marine Test Seahorse only went up in value because of Hyper Marine Test. And if you're excited about Marine Test right now, you're kind of wasting your money and time. Even though I personally have some Marine Test stuff, um, I personally am I, I'm holding. I do think Marine Test value is going to decline before it increases. And I don't know if Rising Rampage and Marine Test value would increase. Once again, like I said earlier, with people pulling and playing the lottery, cracking Rising Rampage booster boxes to get that Prismatic card, hopefully not Storm Dragon's Attorney, even though it's $73, which is still pretty good. Um, 
Marine Test is still going to go down in value, being the fact that it's not going to see any meta play. In fact, not only would it not see any meta play, as you can play as move forward to the uh, Megatons, they're going to want to put their money to that and not in Rising Rampage. Even with the unlimited version of Rising Rampage coming out, why would you buy that version, even though it has some decent Marine Test promos, you can just buy those individually, but why would you buy the special edition? Because they don't have the Prismatic Secret Rare. You see how interesting this set is? This is a phenomenally interesting set, because it's right now, right, right front end, has nothing good besides Appaloosa. Now, can it have good value in the future? Oh, it's it's not no question. It's going to have good value in the future. I do think Marine Test is a great deck, and I do think it has a lot of potential, even though Kaiju say hi. I do think this is a really good deck, and I'm personally looking to build it. But I think the best card in this deck in set right now is Appaloosa, closely followed by uh, Get Out. I think this card's highly underrated. I think this card's really, really good. And I do think this card would definitely see meta play in control decks moving on. So don't go too crazy for Marine Sets. Don't go too crazy for Prismatic Secret Rares. Um, my biggest advice to anybody who's looking to get Appaloosa Prismatic Secret, including myself, because I'm looking to get it, by the way, I would recommend just buying it out. And of course, not for 350. Once again, it's going to go double in value as other Yu-Gi-Oh players crack those boxes. So let them crack the boxes and do the hard work for us. Let the value drop. And you'll probably spend, I'm not going to lie to you, 150 250 for Appaloosa, you probably will spend that amount of money. And it's a lot of money, but it's better than buying a bunch of boxes and cracking it open and getting your Prismatic Secret Red being a Storm Dragon's Return. Now, isn't it? <laughs> totally also went up in value. Now, this is because um, my, uh, my, my other fellow content creator made a video talking about this card, and I've been talking about this card for a long while as well, and I do think Totally Awesome has great potential promise, but once again, like Marine says, Totally Awesome is not good yet. It's going to be good again for like the 10,000th time moving forward in the future when the new set comes October 25th, but we have to see how the meta pans out, we have to see what the balance happens, so there's a lot of, a lot of things that factor into Totally Awesome. Anyway, players, I really appreciate you guys watching my video. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Hit the like button, comment down below, and if you want to support the channel, click on the TC Player link in the description. It's your boy V, and you players, have a great day.